Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of How To and Review. Uh, today we're going to talk about caulk guns, um, different types and what you can look to buy. So before we get started, let's go ahead and click like and subscribe for future content if you haven't already. So you're looking to do some caulking, right? Um, or maybe you're looking at what type of caulk gun to buy. There's a lot of different ones out there. Your basic one that you're going to buy is your standard caulk gun. You're going to find in pretty much any store, whether it's a big box store or a local hardware store. I think we're all familiar with this. This is that standard one there, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute. Um, this one, as you can see, is HTX. I believe that means it's from the Home Depot uh, as well over here. This, again, is another Home Depot one that I picked up. Um, actually, this is actually a Pro Source brand, but you can get this at Home Depot. I believe Lowe's sells these as well, too. And uh, this one is a uh, no-drip caulk gun, which I'll talk about in just a minute and what the advantages are there. And lastly, if you want to step up to the big team, uh, this is the Ryobi P310G Power Cordless Caulk Gun, uh, which we're going to look at in depth as well, too. So you're looking to do some caulking, and I guess right off the bat, which one do you want? If you're going to choose only one right off the cuff, I'm gonna tell you to go with this. Um, this is good if you're gonna do large projects, large areas, probably not for small things. And this one is, you may have this already, um, and I use this for the longest time, this type of caulk gun, until I finally said enough. So why did I say enough? This is your standard caulk gun. What you're gonna do is you would take your caulk, so you should never actually use one of these before. You would pull this back as your lever. Um, you would uh, go ahead. I'm going to show you how to load this in a minute, but you would put your caulk in here and you'd start pulling and this would squeeze and push the pressure out and squeeze the caulk out the top, right? And if you need to release it, you push this button, pull this uh, back, the stem back, and take it back out. And if you look inside there, you can see what you're doing is you're pushing that little a valve that's going to squeeze the caulk right through just like a tube of toothpaste. So, what is the difference between a standard caulk gun and a dripless caulk gun? Well, it's pretty simple. You see, when we pull this trigger, you notice it pulls forward and pushes, pulls forward, and I cannot push this back. The only way I can release this is by, there's usually a release mechanism in this one, you just push this valve and you pull it back. Um, and what this will do is this will constantly increase pressure. And of course, you would want to go slower as you're caulking. But the downside is sometimes you can create enough pressure where even if you stop trying to get caulk out, it'll still continue to come out because it's been pressurized. What this one does, this is a dripless caulk gun, is you would load it up in the same fashion. You notice there's, there's no lever in here, right? So what happens is when I push this, it loads up the same. But if I push against it, notice how it still comes back? So what happens is when you want to squeeze the caulk out, you pull this, it'll push the caulk out. But when I release, it allows it to recess. And what that does is it takes the pressure off of your caulk and basically keeps it from continuing to drip out. This is actually a really big advantage, especially um, it helps reducing your, your mess and your waste and everything else. So between the two, I would always go with this. The price is negligible. I think this was maybe when I bought this seven bucks. This guy was $10 relatively pretty cheap, right? Um, and then of course, lastly, we have this one, uh, which I'm gonna take apart at the end. All right, so how do you use a caulk gun? Well, the first thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to load up your caulk. Um, caulk, you're gonna find it in clear, white. You can also get lots of different caulk products from glue uh, to tar for your roof or lots of different things. Uh, first thing you have to do is you're gonna have to release the caulk. And to do that, you're gonna cut off the top. You could use a razor blade. Myself, I usually just find a pair of garden trimmers. It gives me a lot of control. And what I think a lot of people do when they first start um, caulking is they just go ahead and they take off the top like this right there. And that is a rookie mistake. You do not wanna do that. Um, just keep in mind that the bigger this nozzle is, the faster and more furious this is gonna come out. So if you literally do wanna push a ton of caulk out, oh yeah, lob it off really deep in. But if you wanna control that caulk line and make it more uh, under control and filling in cracks, you're gonna to wanna to go smaller. In fact, here's the thing, right? I can take off piece by piece by piece, but once I take something off, I can't go back. So always start small and then work back to what you need. The second thing 
is always try to go in some type of an angle. Um, this is going to help you fill in the cracks. So if you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm taking this and I'm putting this on a slight angle and we're going to make it really small to start. And this is why I love using a garden freezer. See how easy that was? Now you can see we put a tiny little hole in there, right? So how, now you might think at this point, if you've never used a caulk gun, all right, we're good to go. We can load this up. And if you try doing this, you're gonna have one of three things happen. Either it's gonna come out magically, which it's not supposed to. Um, B, you're gonna pull and nothing's gonna happen. You're gonna think your caulk is defective. Or C, you're gonna keep on pulling this like a bad boy and to the point where this thing is gonna explode probably back into your gun. The first thing you do whenever you're gonna load caulk is you see this little uh, needle on the end here? You're gonna spool this out. There is a seal inside of this nozzle. It's usually right around here somewhere. And first you need to puncture this seal. Also, if you use caulk before and maybe you're gonna reuse it because you let it sit, sometimes you got to clear whatever has dried up and, and sealed itself. So now this one, actually, you know, I might've made this a little bit too small. So it's widening it open just a little bit more. And again, remember, you can go back I mean, you can go forward, but you can't go back when it comes to caulk. So now we're going to stick this in and oh, this one is actually already releasing caulk. But a lot of times you feel resistance and you're going to push through here. So the seal for this one was apparently already broken and there's a mosquito trying to bite me out here, which is why I'm waving around. So now you're going to load up your caulk and this is going to apply to pretty much any type of caulk gun, including uh, the uh, power one too. So. We load it up. Now, here's the other thing. You want that tip to be facing the long end. You want it to be pointing up top. Um, there's a couple ways you can mark that. You can kind of just keep an eye on it, which is what I usually do. I've also some, seen some people, they'll take a permanent marker and they'll put a line here just as a reference so they would know where it is. And then you're going to pull. And you notice first it moves the caulk into place. Once you hit that resistance, any more pull, and you're going to start getting this out. The second thing you're going to need before you start caulking, stop and get yourself some type of paper towel. Um, you're always gonna want something to clean yourself off. I just have like a slightly damp paper towel here because as you go, invariably, you're gonna get this on yourself or you're gonna get this on something, someone else. And if this is caulk, it's generally gonna clean up very easily with water for the most part, unless you're using some type of specialty caulk. So it's a quick way to fix your mistakes as you go through. All right, so what these are best for, these smaller ones, and, and, and as I mentioned right off the cuff is that if I was gonna get one, I would get this and not the power. This is gonna hit long projects, it's gonna hit short projects. But if you've ever used a caulk gun, what you know is if you're doing a large project, we are caulking and caulking and caulking. It doesn't take a lot of effort to pull the caulk out, but if you do this enough, it is really gonna wear on your forearms um, and you're gonna weigh yourself down. You're gonna have a sore arm the next day. So if you don't want a sore arm the next day, that is where the power one comes into key. Um, but the advantage of this is you get a tactile feel so you know exactly how much pressure you're delivering. You can go as slow or as fast as you want. And these are great, especially for smaller areas. So let's go ahead and try a smaller area first. All right, so if you watched a previous video, you would know that this is a piece of a triple level Dutch door that I'm putting together. Uh, this is one section here. And what I wanna do is I wanna seal up all the different caulk lines within this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my caulk and I'm gonna squeeze very slowly to push this out. Always start at the corner and we're gonna go ahead and pull just a little bit until we get enough to come out. I can feel the tension kicking. Try to go slow at first. There we go. Now I approximately put out a little bit too much there, but I'm gonna go slowly back with my caulk line and release back into the corner there. All right, so let's try that again. Go over here, squeeze in, nice in a nice smooth gentle fashion. Take your time, just go straight back into the corner. Once again, I notice I'm double checking to make sure I have my point facing up. I go back, squeeze just enough, take my time, go straight back. 
into the corner. Straight back. into the corner. Now this is for a shed, so I don't have to be super precise, but I think that's pretty good. Um, something you can also do too, which I'm sure you've seen everyone do, or you just naturally done it yourself, is if you wanna go through and smooth this out, just take your finger. Now, technically the better way to do this is you wanna get a little piece of plastic, me. But don't push hard, just push very lightly. Take your time, <laughs> and if you want to, use more than one finger, all right? And that's going to smooth out that line again. Now, you might be tempted, and I used to do this too, is if you see that you missed a spot, which I, which I can see that I did, you might be tempted to take your finger and go, <coughs> if you do that, it's going to get everywhere. I know that from experience. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this. Sometimes if you use this enough, you wanna clean the nozzle off. There's pepper there watching us do this in the rain. And you're gonna pull just a little bit right there, just to get it enough. And at that point, you have a nice cleaner line in there. And you're good to go. So that's the basics of how you would do a basic caulk line inside something that's more precise like this. Like I said, I wouldn't use the power one for this. I would go for something uh, like a dripless caulk gun. And unless you got this lying around and you're too cheap to spend the extra 10 bucks to get the better one, uh, I guess you could use this too. All right, so let's start by taking this uh, apart. And probably like most Ryobi boxes, they don't make it easy. Yeah, this one actually is not as bad as some of them. All right, so what we, yeah, it's in there pretty secure. And I don't see that it comes with anything else except for which is most likely a relatively useless owner's manual. So it comes with a manual, of course, but I find that these manuals for Ryobi are pretty subpar at best, um, which is probably why Ryobi often has videos on how to use these things. Um, as we can see here, it looks like this, not sure if this is speed or pressure, and obviously this is gonna be pulling back, correct? Ah. And if I understand correctly, this only has... We'll have to see what this does. So let's go ahead and get a battery. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this in. I just have uh, one of my four amp hours with me. So I'll go ahead and put that in. This is probably quite a bit overkill for this. So we went ahead and we pulled this back and see what happens when we pull. And you can see it is squeezing out. And if we do this, Ah, so this is the speed, slow, pretty darn fast. It's actually good, and this is a lock, basically, so if you do this, you can't pull it. Um, now, I wonder if there's anything in here that says what you're supposed to do when you pull back. Uh, let's take a quick look through here. Again, these things are relatively useless. Uh... Lock the switch trigger by sliding the switch up, use a utility knife. And I do see that there is a caulk popper in here as well too. So it seems pretty straightforward. It's actually kind of good that you have a speed control. I believe the previous models uh, did not have this. You got basically everything at once. So this is actually pretty good. So let's see how this actually works. All right, so what we have here is just some standard DAP uh, Alex Plus, uh, similar to what we were using earlier in the uh, 
uh, no drip caulk gun, it's manual. And this one right here, the only difference really is this is clear. Uh, so let's go ahead and load this up. And again, when we cut these, you want to go on an angle. And you always want to do a little bit more rather than, or a little bit less than rather than a little bit more, because you can't go back. So let's go ahead and pop this to see if there's a seal in here. Uh, you know, I don't like that. I, I wish this would lock in place. This, literally having to hold this is kind of a pain. And there we go. We just released it. Lock this back in. You know, the, one of the downsides I'm thinking of this literally is I'm not going to have a gauge of when I'm going to start pushing, which is fine, but it's just uh, something to keep in mind of. So let's go ahead and push it up. Let me see for this. And you know, it's kind of big actually for a caulk. I guess it'll go inside. There it goes. All right, so let's go get caulking. And we have this locked in. And again, this is the garage project that I'm working on. Um, we put up all the trims. So at this point, we need to go through and start caulking up all the, these trims that we created. And literally, we have to caulk all of this. So this thing, this is going to be pretty darn handy, I think. So you can see we got this already. So let's go to over to the fresh airs and let's give this a try. And the great thing is this is the one where I shed, which... Wow, that thing is amazing. This might be my new favorite toy, actually. Wow. I don't know, a new favorite toy, but this is pretty awesome. You know, one thing I like about this, too, is that it really comes out pretty uniform. I guess once you get down used to the pace, and this is literally the fast mode, went a little bit too, so I'm going to go back. For that, let's go slow. Wow, it's almost too slow. There we go. And I'll just have to clean that up later. I gotta say, you know, this is actually pretty impressive. I almost have it coming out too fast, but that's okay. Because we can literally go back and clean this up later. See, it's almost, I think the biggest thing about this is going to be learning to understand, kind of get a feel for how quick it's coming out. Because you can see I'm going a little bit too quick here. So let's reduce the speed a little bit. And of course, I didn't follow my own advice. Well, we're going to be replacing these anyway, so let's just knock it off on there. Wow, this is so nice. Alright, back to work. And 
I guess that means that I am done. So I guess when it stops working, that is your indication that you are out of caulk. All right, so we looked at a number of different caulk guns here. We looked at the traditional one, the smooth rod caulk gun, which I bought at Home Depot, which is I think probably what most people buy where you manually pull this out and release it um, the old fashioned way. Um, and these do work fine. I mean, I think this is the upgraded way to go, which is the dripless, uh, where if you push, it'll automatically push back. Um, the downside of this too, uh, though, is that if you do push it up, you want to keep it here. It's not going to stay there. Um, but overall, I'd say go with this. And of course, as with any caulk gun, um, you know, no matter what you do, you're eventually going to get some type of leakage in the back here. Um, and you can actually see this in the big gun here too. Uh, we do see some leakage that accumulated on the back pusher here. Um, and again, I just can't emphasize enough that it's important to make sure that you pierce these if they need to be pierced. Otherwise, you could end up with a huge mess inside of here. Um, I've read reports of people having their caulk go all inside the machine. Um, that being said, um, I have to say this thing is amazing. Actually, what surprised me the most about this is the level of control and accuracy you have with this. The downside is because this is doing all the pushing. You, you don't get that feel here. So if you do run across an air pocket or something inside of your caulk, um, you're, you're not going to sense that using this, uh, which I, when using this, I did run across one air bubble. Um, that being said, it was probably just a bad caulk. Overall, love this thing. Um, for most purposes, I'd probably go with this. Um, especially if I'm going to do a quick one-off caulk here or there, maybe just use one tube. But if I'm going to do something more in bulk, this is fantastic. The one area I'd really like to see, which I haven't used this for, which I recently did was working on the roof, is tar. A lot of times you'll get tar in your caulks. Be interesting to see how that handled it because the, the tar is actually a lot harder to push out. Regular caulk, it's easy. It'll be interesting to see how this works with uh, something that requires more force, which with this was a pain to use, honestly. You had to heat up that tar just to get it going out. Um, but then again, as with tar, it's much harder to clean up as opposed to caulk, which is easier in these. Overall, um, is it worth $50? I don't know. I think myself, I think it is, but um, that kind of is at that threshold of, you know, is it worth replacing a five or ten dollar tool with something that's fifty dollars when you're not going to have the absolute control while this is an upgrade for large jobs i'd say this is actually an upgrade uh, for smaller jobs and again as i mentioned earlier i actually recommend you get both so overall that's my review of the ryobi caulk gun uh, model p310g hope you enjoyed it um, if you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And uh, we hope to see you in future videos. If you did like this video, please click like and subscribe. I try to upload as often as I can. And until we uh, see you again, get out there and make your own great outdoor adventures. And as always, take care.